Hello and welcome back to our last Keyframe Friday. It's been a long time coming. You guys have put in a lot of effort to get to this point. It's been a bit of a beating. But this is where it all comes together. Our final project. Something you couldn't have done 12 weeks ago. And now you're going to fly through it like a couple of grandmasters. So, what are we doing? So a little while ago, I thought it would be cool to kind of open up to the forum about what we could cover in the last class. And there were a lot of really good suggestions, but as I started putting stuff together, I realized that that was tearing off a whole new band-aid. There was a ton of extra new stuff that we were going to kind of have to cover. And so I decided to go with the original idea because this is a really good bookend kind of container for all the things that we've been covering. So. We're going to get Bolo to dive off this board, and he's going to splat down onto the floor. And we're going to get to cover everything. Our squash and stretch when he's diving, when he gets into this pose and takes off. Our anticipation heading into the jump and when he's about to hit the ground. The follow-through and overlapping action, obviously when his arms are coming down and all his work will be offsetting his pieces as he makes the jump. Our pose to pose, obviously. Our staging, we can figure out a nice way to shoot this to kind of best sell the action. Uh, then we got arcs. We're going to be able to check one huge arc and make sure that he's taken off properly and smashing into the ground properly. We'll use our paths for that. Our slow in and slow out. A really good spot for that is going to be at the top of the jump when he gets to his kind of pinnacle dive pose. Our secondary action. I was thinking maybe before he dives, you know, we can... Maybe have him like tipping his head and cracking his neck, wiggling his fingers, just doing a little bit of secondary business. Exaggeration. Well, he's going to be splatting onto the floor like a pancake, so that's pretty exaggerated. He'll also probably have a little bit more hang time than he would in reality. We'll kind of stretch that out a little bit. Then we're going to be able to deal with our timing. Uh, this is the first class that we have actual reference footage, so we'll show you how to use that. We'll use that to kind of set up some of our timing. And then we'll deal with solid drawing and appeal, but you guys already know kind of how I feel about those two. They kind of go back into staging and posing and arcs, so basically we're just going to make something awesome. Okay, so you don't have to use Bolo if you don't want to. Um, you can use Ace, Simple Guy, Bolo, or Hero for this project, and it'll all work the same, and you'll be able to follow along because they all have Ace rigs, and the rigs are all consistent, so I won't be doing anything that you can't follow along on. And that's one of the nicest things about the ACS setup is that you can be working on multiple characters, all sorts of different styles, but the rig is consistent. You, the more you work with the rig, the more familiar you are with it. And every time you pick up a new character, it already feels like you're kind of acquainted. So you could use whoever you want, but I'm going to use Bolo because I relate to his body type the most. Okay. Let's do this. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need for this class is the diving board. Uh, you can head over to the share site and grab that. Um, it should work in 701 and 801, no problems. I don't think it will work in 601. Um, it was modeled with uh, Bolo scale in mind, but if you select this uh, top group here and just hit the R key for scale, you can adjust it to whichever character you decide to use, and the rig will still work. Just here, it's just one simple control. It's just the bend control to kind of boing. We'll animate that as we see fit. And then at the end here is just a little uh, kind of little locator that we can dynamically parent his IK controls to. Because once he starts jumping, we don't want to have to go in here and hand track the feet to match this. We just want to, when he contacts, dynamically parent, bend the board, and we want his feet to get pulled so we don't have to hand track them. Because that's how we used to do it in the old days, and it's horrible. So, yeah, go get your diving board. Okay, so the next thing you're going to want to do is import the reference footage. That's also on the share site. So you can go grab that. It's a zip folder, and it's just a sequence of uh, PNG images. So we are going to add an item, a backdrop item. You'll get your little doohickey here. Uh, under the properties, just click the little image box here, and we want to load a sequence. So I save this in a reference folder. 
uh, just click on the first one and hit open and it will load the sequence onto the image plane. So with that selected, you can access some of the properties for it. I actually flipped this footage around when I exported the image sequence from Premiere, but I didn't even have to. I didn't realize you could just flip it here, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can invert it. You can adjust the contrast of it, brightness of it, and transparency of it, which is really nice. And you can move it easily, put it where you want, which is also really nice because I've used some other apps and this is not, uh, seems like a simple thing to do, but sometimes it's not because it's either being projected from a camera and you got to look at it through only the camera, but this is great. You can put it wherever you want, angle it to wherever you want. And the best part is now when we scrub, reference is always here. There we go. Okay, so I just did a file import and I brought Bolo in from my ACS folder. Um, pretty sure you guys can figure that out. Uh, so I'm just going to take a look at our footage here and see what we got going on. Okay, so how many poses are we going to need here? We use the footage to get just the big, the, the bulk of them. We're going to be sliding stuff around and everything after, but it's just nice to kind of have something to look at. So, yeah, like if I was animating this, I would have never thought that that stride would be that big. I thought it would be like a tiny little stride, but like a, a little, a bunch of little steps. So that's cool to see. So there's one pose we're going to hit. Uh, see, that's cool too. I would have never thought that you'd transfer, you would do the jump off one leg. I thought you would have had to like plant both feet and jump. So that's kind of, that's a cool little thing I would never have done without reference. So we'll probably hit that pose. This one. One at the bottom here. See, that's cool too. I would have thought just doing it out of my head that you'd be like balled up and all compressed on the board and then kind of explode up. But he's kind of just driving down with his legs and he's almost, he's already extended and then the board does all the lifting, which is kind of cool. I would have never thought of that. And then he tucks it up pretty good there. I don't know if I'm going to do this pose. I might. I think this pose would work good to go into like a starfish dive and splat on the ground. Or you could just leave him tucked up in a ball like that and over-rotate him and land him on his back. I mean, it's however you like. Okay, so let's start posing this guy. I'm just going to grab our reference here. Slide it over so we can kind of see what's happening. And, uh, yeah, make sure you turn on your actor for whoever you're using. Using Bolo, frame one there. And let's start posing this out. I'm going to probably have to do a lot of this posing stuff in fast forward. Because the first time I did the bolo dive, I think it took me about six hours to animate. And you guys don't have six hours. No one wants to watch a guy pose a character for six hours. That's brutal. So I'll just kind of do this, and I think I'll... I'll just crank the pose speeds up to like 10 times speed so you can kind of still see what's happening, but you don't have to live it. This weight's a little over the leg. Very ping pong paddle. I'll just do this quick. Doesn't have to be anything special. Just make him look a bit human. All right, so that's pretty good. Just make sure we key all that. Key the actor. Pop open our graph, make sure everything's keyed. There we go, we're good to go. So I'll close the graph back up. <clears throat> Let's 
let's move on to our next pose. So we got arm swing back, and he plants the foot straight leg there. Let's translate him forward. Do a little pick walk in here. Up, down arrows. That's actually funny. That's another thing. I would have never thought that you swing both arms back. That looks weird. But as the footage doesn't lie, we're getting dangerously close to popping that last, that back IK there. So I'm going to push that much further. Okay, so we will key that. And then his hips this kind of 90 degree thing. We'll do the up and down stuff with the board after because this is going to take a bit of choreography to get these two to work together. So for now, I'm just going to animate them straight and then we'll, we'll sort that out after. So we got this pose. Looks like both arms swing through. So we'll get his hips caught up. Shoulders are definitely going to be raised to get your hands up like that. And we're going to rotate them through. We might have some gimbal stuff to sort out once we hit, start doing our breakdowns. Gonna move the ref over a bit. It's kind of cool that it's transparent through the body, so it doesn't block it. It's a nice little feature. Okay, so it's about an hour and a bit later, and uh, I decided to just go through it and key it all because we ended up doing a lot more keying in the course than I thought we were going to. Originally, I thought we weren't going to touch a human character until this actual project, but it worked out good in the end because we ended up using Simple Guy through big chunks of the course and I think you got a better feel of working with a bipedal character. So just having to sit here and watch me pose this out for an hour, hour and a half is, even in fast motion, is kind of ridiculous because I think you guys get posing. After the first three, it's more just copying the reference. And So, um, I've hidden the locators. I've done all the blocking. There's no tweaks to anything yet. This is just copying the poses, so let's see what we got. All right, so let's take a peek. So right away, you can see we got some bad stuff happening on the ground. I decided to put him up into this pose here, the curl, and then I'm going to have him landing over here and you got to pull him under the ground to make the splat work, but we'll we'll look into that later. So right off the bat, I think uh, I think the takeoff's pretty good. It's a nice motion. I mean, considering we've done nothing to it except just poses like this, he's got to do some steps and more up and down with his hips and basically another cleaning pass. This arc here is horrific. It's like it's like a Tron bike. He just goes. Whoop and just like he's going down straight like he's sliding down a roof not good so we'll fix that arc and we'll give him way more hang time like even in the reference if you watch the footage he hits they hit about the same time but he just kind of he's racing down so we'll add some more hang time in there and start breaking up some of the poses so I'm pretty happy with this takeoff motion because there's a bunch of stuff in here I wouldn't have thought to do but at the same time, I'm not trying to do motion capture. I'm not trying to roto animate this thing. So I think I'm pretty much done with the reference for now. I mean, it's it's just a guide, and we're going to start tweaking and doing our own things with it. But uh, yeah, I think, I think the mechanics are there, so I'm just going to delete it. You can hide it if you want, but I'm just going to kind of do my own thing now.
Yeah, so if we go to right in the middle here, everything's kind of just going straight through. Not very cool. So it's definitely going to need to stand up in the middle of this. So push this up. Lower this heel down because I don't know if you'd be quite that far yet. This up. Just add a bit of a, just break it up a bit so he's not just transitioning so linear to the other pose. So we'll key that. Right off the bat, that already feels better. Stepping up. I think I want to push him down. So now you can see he's stepping into that. And he really throws his weight up into this and eventually we're going to have to deal with this diving board. And you know what, I think I'm going to turn on my my motion path right now for the hips because I think a lot of, for this animation especially, the hips really dr are driving a lot of it. You're going to be basically playing catch up with some of the stuff and then as his body starts to fall, we're going to start pulling all his joints back behind him. Like his pelvis is going to be racing forward as everything else lags behind as he goes into the splat. So let's turn them on. Motion path, add motion path. Ugh. And I usually edit them. So uh, time out. Let's make it 100. I'm in 100. And Change the draw scale. Sorry, I want to be able to edit it up and make sure we turn it on so that it stays on. On. Okay, so there's our path. So let's get this working. See that little thing we added here? That wasn't there before. That makes a big difference. Push that up. Push this down. Maybe pull it forward a bit. See how the hips, see how the arms pendulum through now? That makes way more, it just feels better. And I think I'm going to push this down. So now it's going to pop. And we could probably push that up a bit. So I think his hips are good right now, but his, his animation, like this arc is really nice. Maybe not this one in here. Let me fix that. There we go. I think his body animation is making this look weird, the rotation. So I'm going to fix that. this one in here. Pop open the graph. I'm going to turn off the actor for a sec so we can just see that channel. That's not doing anything. I'll rotate X. Yeah, it's got... So I'm going to take this one out that we did before. This one too. So now it... All 
There we go. Close that for a sec. It doesn't have that jarring pop that it did. But now the pose is totally screwed up right here because we've raised them and bumped them up. So I'll turn the actor back on and we'll redo this pose here. Yeah, see now he's racing down into this last one. So I'm going to take this. Because he's racing down into this last pose, pull all this stuff up here. Because now we're going to let the everything trail behind. We're going to arc his back and make him look like one of those dudes in Godzilla jumping out of the airplane with the red thing out of his foot. Maybe won't crank this pose this hard just yet. Got a bit of twinning going on. Maybe break this up a bit. I think he could still be looking at the landing here. That's pretty good. So bolo set, key all that. Okay, so that's working pretty good. He flails out. But we're still racing into this last pose here where we go through the ground. So I am going to, right before we hit the ground, we want to be really extended back. So pull this down and really crank this pose. Going back to the hole, you won't see it, but you feel it. I'm going to hit the O key, turn off our locators, and let's do a preview. All right, so what do we got? Yeah, we got some jerky spots, but that's going to happen. I'm pretty happy with this whole takeoff thing. I mean, there's really not, that's just a few poses, but it has a nice organic feel to it. This, there's a lot of some stuff happening in the shoulder there and gotta work on that. The pop here, the rotate is feeling a bit weird. But this part's feeling much better now. So he's in the dive pose there, and then because we set another one at the bottom, he kind of things get left behind. You see the feet are kind of doing some weirdness here. I think I need to keep these pulling back. I think they're they're speeding up and they're catching up with the body. So we'll clean up some of those curves. Uh, let's get working on the diving board. Let's get the diving board in on this action. Now I kind of did this backwards. I'm kind of regretting the way I approached it. There's a bunch of ways you could do it, but now thinking about it, for dynamic parenting to work, the objects shouldn't be animated because once it takes over, this motion will drive the animation of the feet, right? But I've already animated the feet, so when it hits the platform, it's going to keep animating. They're just parented to it, like you, the child can be animated under the parent. And it worked for kind of getting the posing and the timing, but now it's kind of a pain so the easiest way to do it is just we'll hit here and now i've blown away the animation from here to here so between the contact at 37 and 50. so we'll go to frame 37 
and let's add a dynamic parent. Add a parent, and we'll just frame 37, same with the other one. Dynamic parent, add a parent, and just, there we go. So we'll go to the frame before, and then just right click, and it'll break the connection. And right click on that one, sorry. Just drop it and right click there. So now you'll see they come on at that moment. Now they're parented. They're parented at 50, so at 51, we'll right click. And now the connection's broken. So they're parented through this chunk here and the parenting goes away. So now when we animate the board, the feet will follow along. But this is going to be a back and forth kind of massaging to get these to work. So, but let's see it. So, okay, so let's select this in item mode. And we'll just hit the S key, 37. And then go down. Let's see now the feet are attached. It's going to take a bit of massaging. So it's zero here, then bang, down. So if we pop up on the graph here, not a very exciting curve, but we kind of did the animation first and we already know that we kind of like the look of it. So I don't want to, don't want to pull those IKs on the legs and make them snap. See, like that's too far now. So put that there. Yeah, so your animation's doing some weirdness now, but now with the board moving, it looks like we're going to have to tweak. Yes, yeah, so if we put this back to make it match with the toes. I don't think it's coming up fast enough. I think it's kind of boring. Eh, maybe not. Yeah, we just got some hiccups and stuff in the curves now. So we should probably make the board come to a settle so it'd go up. And a few frames later, it'd be down again. And then up. Down. Um, like one of those door stoppers that you kick on the back of a door. So, may not be perfect, but that's what tweaking's for. Okay, so we'll drop that. Close up the graph here. And let's do preview. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Yeah, it just needs cleaning through the curves. You can see the it's a bit chunky up in here. 
something in here. Oh, that IK pop in the leg. That's not good. We'll fix that. Should probably push his body down further here. More squash. Hold it in the squash longer than have it pop out. Looks like something's happened to his leg here. Maybe after the, after the dynamic parenting, it looks like it's done something up here. So we could tweak these a bit. Yeah, see something's happened here because it's getting trailed behind. But that's an easy fix. Yeah, his foot's not hitting the the final position anymore. Cool. We'll go in, do a cleaning pass, and be back in a sec. Okay, so here's the polished animation. I've spent about just over an hour tweaking curves and pushing poses, and here we go. So we fix that stuff that happened with the busted feet. That's sorted. The board's sorted. Um, he's taking a much bigger pose now here. His arms are swinging back further. There's a bit of arc in his back as he's doing that. He leans into this pose more anticipation before he was kind of standing up. And I've tipped his head down. And he's, he's coming down in Y a lot further. Uh, foot slips through. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't tuck him up as much as he was before. I just kind of got him in this like pre belly flop kind of neutral pose, and then as he falls, everything starts to splat behind. So I'll just turn the locators back on, and uh, if we select the path, we can see what's happening here. That's working good. And if we select his foot, see what's happening here. And I added this little bit of bounce in the board here during the first step, so it's just not so rigid. But he pulls up. A bit of an IK pop there. Could probably fix that. That's the thing that sucks about animation. You can literally just keep tweaking and tweaking and tweaking for days. There we go, but I'm happy with his arcs. I mean, at least they're clean. They they could be tweaked to infinity, but at some point you just got to move on. So let's check out the other foot and see what happened over there. This is the pendulum foot that kind of swings through. So kind of push this up a bit. I like this kind of shark fin shape that it's making now. Whoop. That's kind of cool to actually leave it lagging behind. Push this up a bit. Just so the toes clearing the board. But that's got a nice kind of pop to it. So I did a little bit of uh, animation with the head, some more stuff in the back. It could do a whole other pass probably on arms and fingers, but let's finish this video this week. So here we go. He's all set up and ready to splatter. So let's get our magnet effector and splat him. Okay, so the animation's set up. We're good to go with that. So let's add our defector. So in the setup tab, I to go into Bolo, and we can't select Bolo's mesh or whatever character you're in, you're gonna need to find the mesh. Um, with most of the ACS rigs, I think it's in the bind meshes folder. There's a little mesh there. So with that selected, just click on magnet and it'll get added to your item list. And we can go back to animation. So what is the magnet effector? I don't even know, but it's awesome. 
I don't know how it works, but I think after I show it to you, you're going to be like, wow, I could use that for a million things. So here he is. Let's take a peek at what it does. So this is the circle one. You can see there's, there's a million uses for this. So there's some settings down here. You can do the arrange, how much it affects it. If you want some crazy vortex type of... Awesome. Um, there's a repulsive thing that makes it more like a like bulges away from the center. Uh, for our <laughs> that's awesome. He looks like one of those dudes in those sumo suits that they have at fundraisers. Okay, so we want the planer, and we don't want it repulsive. Now you can see here that the influence is really strong and it's pulling the skin off the joints. So if we just dial this down, you see there's no, there's no effect. But the reason I was saying we got to pass him through the ground, actually this is off the ground here, let's set this down to zero. That's the ground. So now if you look, the skin has been torn off of the bones and is flat. It's just, it's just awesome. What an amazing effect. I love it. So he falls. Dive, dive, dive. Bam. And the coolest thing is if you take this now and animate him backwards, if you just rotate him, starts to come out of the ground and this how you can like how many possibilities does this have come on that's awesome so if we pull them back out again like right now there's there's nothing and then there's splat right but what you can do if, is if you dial in this control here the range you can actually kind of pull it a little bit so it makes it look like the skin is sliding a little bit like there's a bit of pull to him you don't want to pull it right off his bones but I think it helps it, it has a nice kind of it stretches him like the squash and stretch it just exaggerates the slap boom But again, the possibilities with this deformer are endless. Like if you change its rotation or its orientation, now he's getting flattened that way. So you need a character to get hit by a bus and splatter on a windshield. Boom. There you go. Done. Um, Z, same thing. this to Y. I'm going to turn off our locators and let's do a preview. All right, let's see what we got. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so our splatter is working. Magnet factor is awesome. Let's uh, let's split this view and we'll just do a quick camera animation. So let's uh, we'll control and swipe to the right to split this viewport, and then uh, I'll switch this to the camera view. And if we select our camera up here, actually, I guess we need to go to the render. Sorry, we can choose our resolution. Resolution. So say let's make it HD, seven twenty. Gonna need our locators back for this, and just uh, just frame this up in this window. I've got my camera.
cameras turned off here so hit the O key turn the cameras and lights back on we're gonna need this so what makes a good for scenes like this it's almost easier to animate them the camera backwards so that's that's a pretty cool composition makes him feel like he's up high I don't know, we'll just wing it. So we know we want him to be here in the end, so... So we just hit... I'll key all that, just hit the S. to local s turn that off because I want to rotate that key that. We kind of rotate up as he's coming to the end. I see it's seesawing here. So, middle click and drag to say 40 so it holds it, hold, up, wide, and yeah, he's racing past the camera, so I gotta, it'd be nice to catch that. Oh, we got some bad stuff happening with the arm on the other side there. Oh, it's gimbling. I'll delete that. Maybe just rotate it back around. What's going on there? Let's see our, oh, yeah, you can see as he's rotating around, his arm's doing this big corkscrew thing on Z. Whoop. So we'll just select these, middle click and drag these back around to fix the gimbal. So now it shouldn't twist. And go select our camera. And that ro that rotate X there, that's a bit distracting. I know why we're doing it, but maybe take that out. So it's kind of, um, now we're losing our guy. <laughs> As you can see, we're just making this up. There's no... Well, now we're missing the whole dive. There we go. 
It's not exactly the best angle. But you can see what's happening here in this other window. Boom. Okay, so close this one off. I'll close this. I gotta turn off my grid. And I gotta turn off wireframe. Good for it one. And let's do our final preview. <laughs> Maybe not the best camera angle, but I will leave the cinematography for this shot up to you guys. So that's it. That's the end. That's our final project. I really hope you guys enjoyed all the stuff. And uh, I look forward to seeing the stuff that you guys come up with in the forums. Good times.